question of what is the good life? How do we know we're living the good life? And we live in a world that has a lot of answers for what the good life is. It is, uh, there are different ways of thinking about the good life. And one of the things that uh, I would like to explore with you is how the good life is offered to us both in James and Matthew as a sort of two-choice road. Matthew 7.14 says, wide is the road and easy is the path that leads to destruction. And narrow is the road that leads to life. James offers us a morality of good for you life and bad for you life. So we're going to kind of explore this in a, in a bit of a binary because it'll be easier to think about. When you see that picture of the highway, it's such a wonderful thing to think of the good life as like this highway that just leads directly to whatever your ambitions and hopes were. It, it, there aren't a lot of cars on it. If there are, you're still going where you want to go. Highways are wonderful, right? Because they get us there quickly. But we also know that highways have a history and they have a past. In this country, when highways were put in, Robert Moses intentionally took out whole neighborhoods, particularly impoverished neighborhoods, because what mattered was the main majority of people getting where they needed to go fast. Commerce, wealth, affluence, that was the highway, and that was the priority for the good life for all. You notice in the picture that there were these little side roads on either side, the access roads one way on either side. I want to invite you to think about the dichotomy right there of the highway and the access road, the frontage road. When we think about how we're living the good life, James invites us to show that we're living the good life by our humility and our wisdom, that as we have wisdom, we are more and more able to give evidence that we are living the good life. But what is that? What is that? Highway life is the good life of American culture, right? Highway life is about getting there quickly, being in whatever the best thing is we can be, and going along that road to get there. When you're on the highway, everybody else around you is encased in some other identity. Have you ever had road rash? I mean, it's so road rash, road rage, where you're so, you just get mad because you don't see the person, you don't know them, all you see is what they're in. And when you're in a, a setting where you don't know people, really the way you know them is what they're in, right? There's a lot of highway culture that is about superficial identity and it gives us these characteristics. What it means in our culture to have worth and a good life is about what we can buy, what we can eat, where we can go. It's about the easy life. Is it convenient? I love me some convenience. I'm on that highway. I want to get off real quick, get my gas, get my snacks, get back on and go. Convenience is really an American value really an American value, at the cost of so much, right? And then it's a closed system. I know who you are. If you're like me, you're dressed the way I know I value, right? You're driving a car I recognize. You're in my group. And that system might be all sorts of different things. It could be your family system, your social system, your profession. But it isn't inclusive. Our minds don't broaden enough to increase who belongs. It's simple. This is a wonderfully easy, simple mode. I got me a nice car. I got me a nice house. These are my people. I got me this neighborhood. I know this area. We think alike. These are my people. That's highway life. And it's not necessarily the best spiritual life. James 3.16 says that earthly wisdom leads to envy and selfishness, which lead to disorders. Disorder. James says disorder. I think of a lot of disorders that come from this way of living. The disorder of addiction, of unhappiness, of chronic insufficiency, 
of broken relationships. I'm sure you can name some disorders you have seen shown as a result of this lifestyle. Well, then there's the alternative, what James would call the good life, the moral life, the spiritual life, the earthly wisdom, I mean the heavenly wisdom. And the invitation is for us not to go on the highway, but rather to hit the access road. The access road that you know as well as I, if you've ever been on a highway, is annoying. It's different, it's slow. You end up having to interact with people you didn't necessarily want to interact with. There's traffic, you might end up behind the old tractor for a while and you're not going nearly as fast as you wanted it. It's unpredictable. You might characterize it this way. It's complex. It's complex. You don't know. When you're off on that little road, your life gets so much more complicated than you thought it was going to be when you had that sense when you were younger that mm, it was going to be just like this. I was going to do this and this and this and I'd end up here. And the access road is twisty and turny and there's cones and there's potholes and there's all these different things that come up, and it's complex. It's also very much characterized by change. Change. It's got, in fact, you could change the slide. We're trying to, <laughs> woo, see that? We just characterized it as a very specific example. So change, then you know, it's like everything in our lives is perpetually changing, and you can't predict it. And finally, it's communitarian. I've never been on an access road besides ones where it's, you know, nobody, there's just the woods. But when you're on that, on that trail of your life, you realize you need people. You need people to help you and you find people that you want to share with. It's the best thing for road rage ever to start going on a different mindset even on the highway. Because suddenly you learn to have empathy in the midst of complexity. I think we're having technical difficulties, possibly. But you're with me, right? That this is where we're trying to go. So my son Wes has this, oh, okay, so we submit ourselves to God, and God equals complexity, right? There is nothing greater. By definition, God is greater than all we can ask or imagine. So God is inherently beyond our comprehension. And when we think of our lives as being a part of something that's so much greater than ourselves, then we move into the wisdom that James invites us to. Submit ourselves to God, because in that we get clarity, way more clarity than we think when we're doing our self-interested good life highway mechanism. When we live this way, we realize that there is much more to life than just our life, and our sense of community widens. So my son Wes has this car, uh, and he and his kids and his wife decorated it, and when you see it now driving around, you'll know this is Wes driving around. So he uh, works in Kirkwood, and they were at a parade recently, and they were, the kids, his children were marching in it, and he and his wife were in the parade, and his wife, if you haven't met her, she has a, 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 a mohawk that's bright yellow, and my son has long turquoise hair. People in Kirkwood aren't used to this, I guess, because at the parade, at the parade, one of the other parents came up and said, you must be new here. We're so glad you're here you're, to, to add diversity to the, to the parade, and... Um, so they were like, okay, thanks. So at the end of the parade, she came back and she asked Wes, do you have a car that's just covered with all of this painting? And he said, yeah, I do. And she said, my kids love your car. They love your car. I just got a $50,000 car. And my kids are like, mom, your car is so lame. You need a car like this this mom and so she was telling my Wes about this and I just thought this is so indicative of maybe the two lanes right the, the two choices that we have in life because when we move past 
a sense that the good life is a sort of narrow identifier of self-worth, that it's only about what we accumulate and acquire and our convenience and our security and our belonging in our little group, and we widen and we open up. We have a place for creativity. We have a place to broaden ourselves, to be empathic for things that are different from us, for people who might be different from us, so that we can share the wealth of what it means to belong to, to God and to something so much greater. So how are we doing? How are we doing on that? How are you doing on your journey of thinking about your spiritual maturity? Are you at a place where the complexity is inviting you to have empathy? Or is it just freaking you out? Because complexity does that. It's scary. We want control. We want certainty. We want to know what the road signs mean for our lives. And sometimes they just don't help us. Can we have empathy for ourselves and for others in the midst of that? That's our invitation. Can we be like little children that Jesus invited us to in the gospel? Instead of saying, they're not a part of us, they can't be doing that, or no, 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 I'm greater than you are. Jesus says, be as a child, play, enjoy, widen your arms to what is around you that is beautiful that we can be grateful for and celebrate and let us have kindness in our hearts for the person that just cut us off on the highway. Let us imagine something greater than ourselves and be open to it instead of being stuck. So how are you doing? James gives us an amazing promise. He says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. I mean, think about that, you guys, what that really means. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. We're talking about the creator of the universe being available and ready for relationship with us, regardless of our mistakes and our brokenness and whatever we're going through, that love and forgiveness and joy are right there for us. And then, that's not the only good news. The other good news is regardless of which highway you're on or which road you're on or how you're living your life trying to live the good life, we're all headed in the same direction. We are headed into the embrace of God, into the love of God who will hold and redeem and restore us for eternity. A God who will, at the end of the road, be there with open arms saying, welcome home.